Clutter is a bunch of unmade decisions. Hey everyone, I'm back and today I'm really actually super excited to share today's interview with you, which is Ali Kazaza. So Ali and I have connected a while ago and we hit it off um, and I wanted to share her with you and her new book, which is called Declutter Like a Mother. And you and I have probably heard about many decluttering books, about the movement of minimalism, Marie Kondo, and everyone has their own style and way of doing things. And every time I listen to, about minimalism or decluttering, I find it really interesting because we're so overwhelmed. We have so many decisions. We have so much access to... Um, information. We have so many access to, you know, free webinars and newsletters and podcasts and books and material items and the possibilities are endless. And when Allie and I were talking and she said, clutter is a bunch of unmade decisions. I thought, holy shit, this is it. And you think about clutter or I think about clutter in the sense of physical clutter, right? I, you could constantly go through your possessions and let things go every single day, every single month. You could constantly detox. And we do that in every area of our life, whether it's your thoughts. I'm constantly teaching people how to declutter their mind, declutter their emotional state, declutter the physical, declutter everything. And clutter is unmade decision. It was such a mind-blowing concept for me. But when she said it, I was like, yes, because it's a physical representation of something else that we are not letting go of. It doesn't mean you have to live as a minimalist and only have one book or get rid of everything. And, you know, but here's the point. The holidays are coming up. We're going to bring more stuff into our house. And we have to ask ourselves, is this intentional? Is this intentional? What purpose does this serve in my life? And why? Why am I even bringing this into my, into my life? Why am I purchasing this right now? Think about the things that we buy our children out of guilt, out of overwhelm, out of because we should do something. And that when you make that decision not to do something like, no, honey, you don't need that, how guilty we feel or the lack of guilt, just paying attention to our emotional response when we are letting things go. Everything is a grieving process. And then yet again, in this podcast, Allie reminds us of why it is so important to actually do this work, whether you are physically decluttering, whether you are mentally decluttering, because if we don't, it builds and it builds and it builds and then we explode. So oftentimes I tell people when they feel stuck, I'm like, just start somewhere. Declutter your room, declutter your kid's toy box, declutter something. Because when we start to look at one area of our life that's craving our attention, it starts to move the energy in other areas. So Ali Kazaza, her last name is spelled C-A-S-A-Z-Z-A, is on a mission to eradicate hot mess mom stereotype by empowering other women. She has built a massive audience and a multi-million dollar online business based on her proven family-oriented approach to minimalism. She's also the host of The Purpose Show. It's a podcast um, and the creator of multiple online programs and courses that garner tens of thousands of registrations each time they run. Her platform continues to grow every day as more women discover her life-changing approach to creating an abundant life. She lives in Southern California with her husband, Brian, um, where they homeschool their four young children. So I'm really excited for you to listen to today's episode with Allie. Um, Again, reshare, post on Instagram. You can tag me at Heather Chauvet and Ali at A-L-L-I-E Kazaza, C-A-S-A-Z-Z-A. Um, you can send me a message. You can text me 313-710-5199. Let me know what your biggest takeaway wa- it was. 
or is. And um, yeah, let's continue the conversation. I truly believe that the more alive we become, the lighter we feel, the bigger impact we can make. All right, Miss Allie, let's dive in. Look what I have right here. Yay, let's do it. Yay. Happy seeing it in like friends' hands after all this time. I, You know what my favorite thing is when I go to like bookstores and I'm like grabbing all the books from like friends and colleagues that I know and you know that years and years ago, and I'm sure you've had this too, when I used to walk around like bookstores and be like, one day, one day. And now you're like, I know these people. Yeah. Like, that's so crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. And it, and it's cool too, because that's how pretty much everyone's journey has been that I've talked to is it's not just their book in the store. They know like the woman next to them or, you know, the person that's book is down in another genre, because that's how you make it happen. Like making connections and building community and doing it together. So it's super cool. Yeah. And how you begin to, I mean, regardless if you call it manifesting or not, but how you can have a thought or an idea and it's a seed that you've planted and then you start taking these little tiny, tiny baby actions. And then you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, how did I get here? How did I get here? So let's talk about declutter like a mother a guilt-free, no-stress way to transform your home and your life. And kind of on that same term is these baby steps that we take. And then one day we kind of open our eyes and we're like, how did I get here? Whether that is in the quote unquote clutter, the overwhelm of your life, I believe manifesting, we're always manifesting. We're always creating a reality for ourselves or not, whether we literally have a whole bunch of shit around us or, (laughs) or not. So I want to just give the microphone to you for a little bit of like, how did like this book and concept of decluttering come to be for you? And what does that mean to you? Yeah. So for me, all of this started from my own story and my own hardship, which I think a lot of um, purpose comes from those times in our life. Uh, So for me, I had three kids under three and I was really struggling with depression and um, a lack of fulfillment. And like, I felt really lost. And when I talked to other people, um, the message was basically like, well, yeah, like, what did you think was going to happen? You have three babies. Like, you're crazy. Like, it's only going to get worse. Like, what do you think is going to happen when they're teenagers? And I felt like so dumb and down and like hopeless. Like I felt like I made a mistake and there was no way out for me. Like there was no hope for me for anything to get better. And the more that I sat in that place, the more I saw it. So that's what I was focusing on. That's what was being shared with me from like mentors. (laughs) like women, like at church, women, like out at the park in life, in my life, in my family, this was the the message. Um, and so I just, I've sunk deeper and deeper into that place and, and just really felt like, well, damn, like if this is motherhood, if this is the message, like why is anyone even voluntarily signing up for this? It doesn't make any sense. And I basically just stayed there for a really long time and I needed help and I didn't know what to do. And one day, I mean, I just kind of got sick of it. I I'm an eight on the Enneagram. And so I was like, I'm just going to blaze a trail and like figure this out. Um, and, and I was like, I I feel like I'm done waiting for this like spiritual, like revolution. Like I'm done waiting for this big breakthrough. I think this is practical because on a practical level, all I'm doing is reacting to my life. All I do is clean up. I never get to like pause and enjoy or be with my freaking kids or be with myself. I don't even know who I am. Like, I just was like, I can't handle waiting for this, this big spiritual epiphany. So I'm going to just simplify. And I started it in my home because that was the most blaring noise at that time in my life. It was constant. We had this big dining area that was not a dining area. It was used as a toy room. And there was like, bins and bins and boxes of toys overflowing with toys like for these little kids because they were the first grandkids on both sides and that's just what you do you buy all the baby things you buy all the toys got to keep them busy 
And it was so pointless, Heather. Like they would literally just walk in there and like dump everything out and come out two seconds later bored. Like they were so overstimulated, but no one told me that. And so I started there and I just gutted, like I took this method, uh, this way of thinking into every part of my home, but I just gutted, like what did not align with what I really wanted for myself and my kids. I want them to be outside in the sun. I want them to know what it's like to make friggin' mud pies and like explore and play with bugs and, and imagine and create. I don't want them to have all of these like shitty plastic toys that are loud and obnoxious and overstimulating them, you know? And so I, I started there. I did, I had the same thing in my closet, in my kitchen, like what's not aligning, what is not worth this space? Because obviously what takes up my space is also taking up all my time. And I just got super ruthless with it and it completely changed my life. I mean, to say that is such an understatement. I felt so much lighter. I could breathe. Your environment affects you. Your physical environment affects you. It also affects your kids and your family and kind of the vibe of you guys as a family unit. And if I was like, if everything is changing so much from just clutter, like how could I apply this to the rest of my life? And, and I just went from there and was sharing it online and, and turned it into a business. And, and here we are. I love that so much. I'm like nodding my head because the whole... First of all, I'm an eight as well in the Enneagram. I think a lot of my friends are eights. So I'm like, let's get shit done. Let's like, <laughs> and questioning, like constantly questioning and, and blazing that path. But I could not fathom why becoming a mother, it was like this secret world where everyone's like, yeah, you're, you're supposed to feel like shit. And then I'm like, but why, but why, why would you do that? And like, and then they just wouldn't push against that narrative. And I'm like, okay, so I'm going to blaze this path. And it like, people are blown away. They're like, I could never, I'm like, all right, well, if you enjoy feeling like shit, depleted, overwhelmed, chronically exhausted to the point where you're dying and you're going to your doctor, you're talking about it in therapy, you're doing all the things. And you're like, not this, not this, not this. You have to surrender. Like you have to get to the point where you're like, let that shit go. Like, let it go, let it go. So I love what you're talking about with the physical. So before we hit record, like I'm literally hiding in my room right now because my, we actually had a flood in our house in July and I'm a very, at this point in my life, I'm a very um, flexible person. Like the wind changes directions and I'm like, pivot, pivot. Like we can figure this out, but I could feel that, um, environment work from home like we're at home all the time and it just completely like uprooted everything in the house and it was one it was a complete declutter because I just got rid of everything that got wet and was like bye see you later um this was the third time this happened to us so photos and everything and my non-attachment to it is just like bye 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 gone but Mm -hmm my office got ruined as well. And so I have been in this weird state where I'm like working a lot for my room because now people are coming into the house and to work on the basement. And I feel like I don't have my own space. So then I rented, um, office space outside of the home, which requires me to put real clothes on and leave the house. And then I leave the house and I go to that other space and I'm like, this feels too office This doesn't yeah. feel like entrepreneurial space. And so there's this in-between of what I'm craving. And I know that, you know, if that's what I'm craving, I can create that outside of myself. Like I don't, I could go figure out how I want to create. I can be creative and I can do that. I can pivot. I don't need to be so black or white, but I can feel how the environment in the home, which is, I would say not unstable right now, but in change and in flow change has disrupted my routine and way of being. And I watch it in my children as well. Hmm. Why do people resist actually getting rid of shit? Yeah, I think that there's a lot of layers, but one of the biggest ones is it's attached to memories and they think that the things are the memories and there's emotion And especially if you're like a highly sensitive person, um, I mean, there's a lot there. It's, it's a lot and it's heavy and it's okay that it's a lot. The other thing that I see a lot is moms basically have like chronic decision fatigue, like all the time. 
And clutter is all just unmade decisions. So to declutter is to make a bunch of decisions, which is not sexy. Like no one is like, yeah, let's go. Like I'll, I'll make all the decisions. Like it, you're done. You're tired. You're exhausted. It feels like an extra, but <clears throat> if we can realize that it's actually not an extra, that it's literally like, uh, okay, you know, on Moana, when the island is like dying and there's like the drain from the ocean, like pulling uh, yes. the island and it's turning black. That is like your environment. If you're not intentional about it, it is literally just a drain on your energy. It is absolutely taking up so much time. Like you wouldn't believe how much time you can get back. It's, it's incredible. Like you just shift as a person. You are so affected by your environment. Marshall Goldsmith says, if you do not create and control your environment, your environment will create and control you. And I mean, it couldn't be truer. And you can test this by just get like kind of straightening up. Even you don't even need to declutter, straighten up like one space. We all do this all the time. And then you're just like, Oh my God, like this is done. I just want to be in here. I'm going to have my morning coffee in here. You don't want to go to the other parts of the house. One of the tips I give in my book is starting to declutter in the bathroom. And when people do this, they almost always email or DM me. I literally want to eat dinner in here because I don't want to go to the rest of the house. Like I I don't want to be anywhere else. It feels so much better in here. Even if things are just, you know, the drawers are decluttered and the surface is clear. It's not even necessarily that you're seeing all these results. You just feel it. It's lighter in there. You've got rid of shit. So this absolutely affects us and we have to shift from, I just am too tired. I'm too busy to make decisions. I can't do this. I don't have time. And well, there's just so much sentimental and we have to become like the action taking problem solving woman that wants to get that time back, that wants her environment to work for her instead of the other way around. You're paying for your freaking house and it's working against you. Like, honestly, that pisses me off. I feel, I feel like I've watched you do something on Instagram before talking about how much something actually costs you. Mm -hmm. Maybe that, hopefully that was you, but it was like a a random item from like the dollar store. Do you ever talk about this? Hopefully Um, this was you. No, my thing is the toaster. Maybe you're mixing me up with someone else. That sounds awesome. Or maybe I had this idea in my head and you inspired it while I was watching. Cause I know I was watching you do something, but it was like, what's it actually costing you? Like you're paying for this price. You're paying for that space. You're paying for the electricity. You're paying, 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 paying. So what's the toaster thing? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So I like to, I always focus on the time. Like there's a section in the book that is about like, let's, it's, I think it's called like, let's look at this from a money perspective. And it, and I do break it down. Like, the money side of it. People get really stuck there. They're like, well, it's wasting money to get rid of it. I'm like, ah, couldn't be further from the truth. But the toaster example is about your time. Basically, I was like, let's use something really inconspicuous that pretty much everybody has a toaster, a toaster oven, whatever that sits on your counter. I'm not saying to go and get rid of this. I'm just using it as an example because you need it. It's there. Like everyone has one. So your toaster is sitting there. And just by sitting there, it requires that you, you know, you use it right? You're using the toaster. You dump out the crumb tray. You wipe the fingerprints off of it. If you're detailing your kitchen, you pick it up, clean underneath it, wipe it down, whatever you do. It's just a few seconds. But when we did the math and we were being like really lenient with the numbers, it was like over two hours spent on your toaster alone per year on your stupid toaster. Like when you really, I mean, it's such a dumb example because it's like, what am I supposed to do? But that's the point all the things that you have need to be dusted, need to be cleaned off or getting used or getting taken out by the toddlers and you have to put it away. Just the fact that it is something that is taking up space in your home, it is automatically taking up your time. And some things are a little bit less direct. Some things are like indirectly draining you. Like the little black dress from before you had kids that sits in the back of your closet that you never touched, doesn't take up any time. But your subconscious mind picks up literally everything all around you all the time, every sound, every every sight, even the energy that you don't like actually see, it'll pick up on that. And so you're literally like, holding on to something that may, I mean, if it's just there and and it makes you happy, great. But for a lot of people, especially the women I work with, it's like this, this reminder that they're not good enough or they're supposed to look a certain way or they're, they used to be something and now they're not. And that's, that's messing with you. So we have to look like every time you walk into a closet, open a drawer, walk into a room, use your toaster, use something in your bedroom. Is it worth it? 
Like, what is it? That's, that's the message. What is it actually costing you? Not just in terms of money, but like time you buy things with your dollars and you buy it again with your minutes. And that last fee is recurring all the time. So we don't need to be like afraid or stressed out, but we want to get intentional. And like, this is what it looks like to not let your house run you for it to be the other way around. Ask, like looking at this, it's normal for people to have a giant house with a garage that's overflowing, that's embarrassing to open with like shit in all the drawers and closets full of stuff, those embarrassing rooms you hope no one goes in and to like also have a storage facility they pay for every month. Like that's very normal yeah. and it's ridiculous. Like we have, we don't have a space problem. We have a stuff problem. Ooh, so, I like that statement. We don't have a space problem. We have a stuff problem. Um, our home is actually very generate, well, small, I would say in the sense of like every square inch is used. And I feel like every weekend or every week we could just constantly declutter, which yeah. brings me to a conversation about, I talk a lot about children's behavior in my program or relationship with your children. And I know we've all experienced this where you're walking into that toy room, you're walking into the bedroom and you're like, your room is a mess, clean it up. Right. You're typically triggered because of all of the stuff and we never put ourselves in the child's shoes with the overwhelm that they are experiencing and feeling of like, oh yes, I'm going to tidy everything up. But at the same time, who purchased all the crap that's in the kid's room? Is that their fault? Did they go to the store and get it themselves? Like just this relationship dynamic with stuff and how it affects our relationships with our children, our partners, and other people who are in our lives. Curious your thoughts on that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that we like want to project, like we want to blame and like, this is a joke. Like you shouldn't be like this. And, and even like the idea of it's their room. <clears throat> I mean, if we just break it down and like their children, they're like, we think they're expected to know how to do things and they're supposed to be taught. So like for, okay, I'm going to use an example in our house. Like we have a ton of Legos. Legos are a thing that I'm not, I love them. They're so good for development. They help my son so much. He's going to be a freaking engineer one day. He loves to build. It is his thing. And I never want simplicity or minimalism or whatever you want to call it to get in the way of like, like I'm not here to do is to have a perfect house. I'm here to do it to support us. And if that is not going to support us, we're not doing it. So we have a ton of Legos. We have this awesome system that I love. It really, really helps. But every once in a while, like they're just everywhere in his room on the floor and there's carpet. So it's like, oh my gosh, like it's like death walking in there and like fingers crossed, <laughs> not going to step on something. And it gets really bad every once in a while. And I used to like freak out. And then it was like, this is overwhelming. Like I'm looking at this and this is overwhelming. And we've agreed to allow that and like have it be a thing because it's worth it to us. But I've got to like, I've got to be in there with him. I've got to teach him. I've got to model for him like, okay, what could we do? Like, what if we make it like a Saturday morning thing where we just like get in here and like make sure everything's good and like organize the Legos. Like he picked the system of how we store them. He likes them by color. That helps him keep it clean. Great. So let's get in there on Saturday mornings and get back to the color thing and like put them away. Like, I think we just need to support our kids. This is about empowering them and teaching them in the sections of my content where I'm teaching about kids. And there's a whole chapter on this in the book too. I'm teaching you how to empower your kids to live this way on their own, teaching you how to do this for yourself. So then you can lead by example and teach them how to make choices about their things. It's not about having nothing. It's definitely not about having the bare minimum of everything. It's about teaching them what's worth it and what's not and letting them decide. So it's not another thing for you as the mom to like micromanage. It's like a family culture thing. So I thought oh, that was kind of scattered, but my point is it's, I think it's about empowering them to understand their relationship with things and understanding what it costs us to have things. The Legos take up more time and space. They just do. Are you still cool with that? Cause it ultimately, I do expect you to clean it up, but I'm here to help you. It's overwhelming. Like I'll sit with you and we'll watch a show on the iPad while we get it done. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to freak out and give you a time limit. But if it's too much, like you can choose to get rid of some stuff. Like I'm giving him the choice. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a co-creation, right? You're empowering the child. You're taking the responsibility, not taking the responsibility off yourself completely, but you're showing up and you're co-creating and holding space for that child, which I think is 
a healthy learning environment where you're like, you're not in this by yourself. I'm not just going to shame or blame you. Um, and yeah, I just, I find it interesting. We just have to stop and think, like think about the bigger picture and think about how are you feeling walking into that child's room or space or the room, whatever it is. Okay. If you're overwhelmed by the clutter, imagine what your child's underdeveloped tiny brain, um, Mm -hmm is feeling walking into that room when they don't even have the intellectual skill that you have, which is like, I'm paying the bills. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Um, it's a culture, it's a culture thing. So can we talk a little bit about, I I definitely want to get into the conversation of talking about like decluttering our mind. Like I'm like decluttering the inner workings of what's no longer serving us, right? Because if we're hanging on to a memory, sometimes the physical manifestation is the physical manifestation of it of like, why won't I get like, I have two pieces of art in front of me right now that I'm looking at on the other side of my room that are not on the wall. And they cost me both a significant amount of money. They are no longer in alignment with who I am as a person And I'm the type where I'm like, I'm just going to gift those to somebody who will appreciate them. I don't really care about getting the money. It brings me more joy to bring somebody else joy. Mm -hmm. But why are they still there? Like, why am I not letting go of that? So yeah, yeah, I don't even pay attention to it. It's like, I have to make a conscious decision of like, I'm going through this whole room and getting rid of it, but I have to feel that discomfort. So the inner workings of it. Yeah, totally. I think that like, I do stuff like that too. And for me, like we're, we're renovating right now. I've got a bunch of things like that. Like when you move to a new house, it's like, well, this doesn't really, this is, isn't really the vibe I want here. Or this does, like you said, this doesn't align with who I am. This doesn't align with who this house is really. And so things like that, like what I've been doing is I'm going to just get super practical. Cause I think that we can make this practical and make it lighter for people to work through, but I'll be like, okay, I'm literally putting it in the calendar. Like I'm such a dork with my calendar. I'll be like, okay. I love it. You don't create space for it's not happening. Yeah, totally. One needs 911. You're like, no. (laughs) Yeah, it's literally, I'll be like, okay, this is bothering me. And I know what I want to do with this, but it's just not getting done. And also like grace for yourself. It considering my life, like it makes sense that the pieces of art are still sitting there Saturday morning. I'm blocking out an hour to just like refresh my bedroom. That's my goal. And that is part of it. So what that would look like for me is deciding who I'm going to give the art to, um, like mailing it to them, uh, whatever it is, dropping it off to them Saturday morning room refresh, and then go for a drive, drop off the art with friends, send it to in UPS, whatever the situation is. And then like go out and treat myself to like crepes or something. But like, I'm making it a thing that like, I'm, this is, it's bothering you. It's bothering me. I need to just get this off of me. And the real reason is that you're just going, you're doing life. And at the end of the day, like you're tired. So it just needs space. We need space to like hit the refresh on certain spaces in our home. And so if you feel like it's just not getting done, literally create space on the calendar and everyone that syncs with my calendar can see it. I'm busy. I'm doing this. Um, and it's kind of silly, but I literally put everything on my calendar because otherwise it's, it's not, not it's not, I call that's part of my ETM process, my energetic time management. And I'm like, what do you want? How do you want to feel? You want to feel lighter. It's not, you know, and then people will get so stuck. Like I want to feel lighter in my life. I don't know where to go. I want to change careers. And I'm like, okay, well, if that feels like a humongous hill or mountain to climb and you want to feel lighter literally start decluttering, like let it go, let it go. And then the ball starts rolling and then magic pops up. Um, for sure. What is your relationship to like Marie Kondo? I'm sure you get this. No, I actually never do. I don't really, I've never taken in much of her content. I did it a little bit in the beginning because her book came out when I was starting my business. So for a minute, I was like, oh shoot, like, what is this? What's going on? And it was such a big deal. So I read like the gist of what she teaches and I kind of was like, oh, this is very different. So I'm, I'm good. I just wanted to make sure I'm not like, am I like subconsciously doing what someone else is doing or like, what, what is the vibe here? But yeah, I don't really know. I think anyone doing the work of helping people simplify more power to them. Like the world needs it. Everyone is extremely overwhelmed. So someone that's giving permission to release 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, yes, go. But I know she's very different than the way that I teach and she's from a different culture and different background. and has a different voice. And, and I think that that's good. Cause some people probably, I don't float their boat. <laughs> <laughs> I also love how I'm, I'm always that person. If I'm trying to solve a problem or understand something, I will read or follow like it's definitely never in my own genre because again, I don't want to be like consuming and losing my own voice. But if I'm trying to learn something, let's say money, right? That's, I don't, I'm not a money person. Um, I will follow, read, listen, and then I watch the through line, right? And what I keep hearing you say is, does it have a purpose? Mm -hmm. Does it like, is it who, is it in alignment? Because if it's not, why are you holding on to it? Like, if this is not about having one fork in your drawer, this is about, yeah. does it serve you? Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's how we should be looking at everything. Yeah. This, the word, like I was even talking to Brian the other day, we were just talking about like how I used to be in this marriage, like such a different person. And the words that I would like throw at him and the words that I would bring into our relationship, like I was joking, like I kind of decluttered that because it wasn't serving us. Like it was just cementing the parts of you that I wasn't vibing with, that I wanted to change, that I wanted to control, which obviously meant the parts of me that I wasn't vibing with, that I wanted to change. And I was just, we were joking, like, you can literally declutter anything. You can literally ask, is this in alignment with what I really want in anything and health and wellness and your business? Like, oh my God, I love applying this stuff to business. And so it's just really cool and really simple. Is this really what I want to be living? Is this really how I want things to feel? Um, and you can get dramatic with the simplest things like my guest bathroom. Is this really how I want my guests to feel when they come over? Like it just, you can just have fun with it and release so much shit that you didn't realize was making you feel so heavy. And yeah. that's the dread. That's the dread when you wake up in the morning and you're just like, oh my God, the alarm again, something's off. It's, it's too much. It's too heavy. And so learning the art of releasing is so good for you. So good for everyone that you, that you are doing life with too. I find that, that, you know, the more I go down this path of whatever you want to call it, personal development, or where you're constantly trying to lead with integrity and feel better. Um, I am like, Oh, I think the whole point is that we are constantly like a daily declutter whether I'm decluttering my mind, whether I am letting go of what's no longer serving me like energetically or in my body or, you know, the foods that I'm literally putting in my mouth, like, is this fuel, right? Like, why mm -hmm. is this here? The clothes I'm putting on my body, like, do, does this feel like me? Is it off? Like everything is just this chronic decluttering. Um, we were recording this, the holidays are coming. So depending on when this goes out or when people are listening, this is like people are mentally, physically, emotionally preparing themselves for a clutter season in their life. Like, oh, the holidays are coming. It's going to be so busy. Um, and then, you, you know, you parents are starting to post like grandparents, please give experiences. I don't want any more toys in my life. And it's just it's like, we're bracing ourselves for the overwhelm. So what do you say to people when they're doing that? I always say the, the way that society has treated and positioned the holiday season is about stuff. It is about physical clutter and metaphorical clutter and calendar clutter. Oh my God. Like so much, like the obligation to go to every family party to see everybody that you haven't seen in forever, the emotional clutter, like from that, <laughs> seeing all these people and, and exchanging all this energy with people that are, are often not in alignment with the people we really want to spend time with. I mean, it's just a lot, but you do not have to let that in. And I mean that in both ways, you literally don't have to do it. You don't have to, I know. Okay. I don't know. Say but that heard, again, say it again, say it louder. You don't have to let it in everything. You don't have to do it. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. You literally like just permission right now. You don't have to do it. I remember hearing about this, this man. Uh, I don't remember somebody in like my online community shared this story with me. And I like, have always remembered it. There was like someone that they knew where their family had this tradition where they never, they didn't do Christmas gifts ever. And their kids are like, were 
that's what it was. I was talking to the daughter. She emailed me when I first started my business. So this is like the grown daughter of this family. And she said that they didn't do any Christmas gifts ever. She's never like had a Christmas with gifts. What their tradition was, this is so cool, was on Christmas Eve, the kids would go to sleep and the parents would pack for everybody. And they'd wake up in the morning and there were suitcases packed and ready to go. And no one knew where they were going except the dad. And they would go on a trip on Christmas day. And it was so fun for them. Like it was such an experience. And then they did like grandparents sent them some presents. So they got some presents, but the parents were just like, you guys don't need any more. Let's just do this. And I thought that was so cool. We've actually, Brian and I did that twice. With oh the my God. I, I it was so this. fun. Where did you like go? What did you do? How long were you gone? Okay. So the first time we went to Florida and it was so amazing. We've been back like six times. I love it there. We went to Clearwater Beach. It was so beautiful, so fun. And then the other time we went up to New York and we took the kids to see the city because they'd always wanted to go. And I had been a bunch and they had it. So we, next time we do it, I want to go to like somewhere like out of the country, but that was, it was so fun. They had no idea. Like it was just so cool. And the, the stress was off. Like we're not available to go to all the Christmas stuff family because we're leaving. <laughs> and then like, we just saw everyone a little before, let them give the kid, kids a couple gifts and saw, saw my aunt and uncle, like after when we got back and, and that's what this family did all the time every year. And so I just think like, there's so think outside of the box, like what would feel really good. So there's that side that you literally like, you have permission to just not even do it. The other thing is if you're like, well, I do like parts of it. I do want to do it, but it just brings up anxiety. I need you to get smaller and like locate what is bringing up the anxiety. Like, what is it about it? And then opt out of that part of it. This may even be as simple as just your mindset or what you're allowing like energetically around these people with your boundaries. Like how is someone treating you, talking to you? Can you just not talk to that person? Can you um, host the party at your house? So you're not going all over the place. Like whatever it is, like try to find it because you deserve that time to locate what's really bothering you because this is the thing that I want these people to understand, like the moms I'm working with to understand. What about you enjoying the holidays? It's your kids will only enjoy it if you're really present and enjoying it. So find what's making you not enjoy it and, and fix it, get it out of there, like declutter it. Love this. Yeah. I, I love adventure. So that's, I'm going to be like, and I have a Brian too. My husband's name's Brian. So I'll be oh, like, Hey, what are we going to do? What are we? And he's, he's like, Oh God, Heather, where are we going now? What are we doing? But for the last few years, we've been doing something right after the holidays. And that's been like their gift, but I do have to do a lot of conscious work because I swing the pendulum, right. Of knowing what my childhood felt like at Christmas. That's like the pinnacle of how, um, like capitalism and marketing have made it like, you got to spend all this. And yeah. And then watching, like, am I trying to overcompensate and then watch, right? Once you start feeling good and decluttering and then somebody says something to you and you're like, oh, I'm not doing that. And it like triggers you and gets you back on the hook. You're like, no, you have to constantly unhook yourself. Um, so I just try to lead by example, but half the time, I'm like, why are you doing that? Well, because I'm supposed to. And I'm like, said who? Yeah. Says who? And then, you know, we're overwhelmed and miserable and angry and resentful. And that's the memories you have. And then your children are like, well, that was great, but was it really, or were they just pizzazzed by all the like sparkly obligate. wrapping paper? Yeah, totally. And you can like pick and choose, like you get to, you get to pick and choose what you want. Maybe you decorate for Christmas and you have your tree and you do all the things, but on, you know, Christmas Eve, you, you opt out and you go somewhere or you just stay in and you don't have to cook a big dinner and have everyone over and, and you see them another day, like on your terms in the daytime for, for brunch or something at a restaurant, there was no cleanup. There's no nothing. Like there's just so many options. And if someone is, you know, butthurt that you're changing the tradition, you're doing something in the way that they didn't want to do it. Do they want to see you or not? Like, do you want to enjoy your holiday season or not? They, they can choose to enjoy it with you or they can choose to enjoy it without you. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing when you gain the emotional intelligence to just watch somebody like puking their trauma on you or their like expectations of you. And you're yeah. like, 
Hey, I can see you're frustrated. Let, we can have a conversation when, you know, when things are, are calmer and it's yeah. just emotional boundaries are a beautiful fucking thing. Yes, especially during the holidays. Yes. And I um, awesome. So we're okay. So declutter like a mother, where can everybody get it? What do you have coming up? I know you always have something going on and um, how can people get more of you work with you if they're interested? Yeah, you can get the book everywhere you buy books, Target, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, whatever you like. Um, I would also invite you guys to listen to the Purpose Show podcast. That's where I hang out every week. And man, the challenge is going on right now. And I'm going to do another one next month, but I don't know what yet. I don't know when this is going to air. So I would just say, follow me on Instagram. Um, it's Ali underscore. That's me over there. And um, keep up with me and let's connect. Yay. I love it. Um, I also love that you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I, I'm a fly by the seat of my pants person. <laughs> I am too. And that gives me so much permission and my team, all the left brain thinkers, you know, the people who love spreadsheets and all of that. I'm like, yeah. listen, I've got to stay in my creative genius over here. I'll, I'll try to pre-plan, but I'm just letting you know if the wind changes, it might happen. And it's such good juju when we're in our genius and decluttering what is not serving us in our business and the expectations of who we need to be and what that looks like, um, because then we serve the world better. So thank you for being you, Allie. Of course. Thank you for having me. Well, that's it. And I wanted to thank you for listening today because I truly believe you are exactly where you need to be. And now I have a favor to ask. In exchange for the value you've gained from this free podcast, I'd be forever grateful if you would leave us a review on iTunes. Share the show with at least one woman in your life who you feel would benefit and or take a screenshot and share it on social media. And always feel free to tag me at Heather Chauvin. The world does not benefit from your guilt and fatigue. The world needs more women who are willing to unlearn everything they've been taught. Women who are courageous enough to feel good and not let guilt run the show. I believe you are that courageous woman. To see if my community and coaching is the right fit for you and your big vision, the relationships you desire, the money, time, energy that you know deep down you are capable of creating, then head on over to heatherchauvin.com forward slash work with me. That's Heather Chauvin, C-H-A-U-V-I-N dot com forward slash work with me and take the next step in the right direction. Taking a stand for how you feel means you are taking a stand for how your, your children show up as adults. And if you have a personal question or topic you'd like me to answer on the podcast, text me 313-710-5199. 313-710-5199. You are so worthy of feeling good. Now go do some scary shit. Oh, 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 oh,